the nail. Before we understand the diseases and disorders of the nail, we need to understand how the nail is composed and how it grows. We've discussed that a little bit in 112, and we know about the layers, how they're one on the other, and that's why we have to be real careful, careful about what we do. The technical term for nail is onyx. It's a keratin substance. You remember the hair and nails, excuse me, the hair and skin was also keratin, which is protein. We call skin soft protein and the hair and nails are hard protein or hard keratin. A healthy nail should be whitish and translucent in appearance with the pinkish color of the nail bed below showing through. And when they're talking about the nail bed, they're talking about right here, the pink part. The horny nail plate contains no nerves or blood vessels. And although when we pull one off, it pulls loose from the nail bed, it feels like the nail hurt, but actually it's the nail bed hurting. The nail is quite porous, meaning water will pass through it much more easily than it will pass through skin. You know, skin has the oily mantle or the oil mantle on it. And that's what happened this morning to one of you that had the pedicure and the nails were really discolored. They had not been using a base coat, so the color of the polish or the nail enamel had been absorbed into the nail plate. And there's no such thing as getting it out. And it doesn't matter even if we use pale pink nail polish. It turns the nails an ugly orange or yellow. So we need to be real careful about that. The water content of the nail is related to the relative humidity of the surrounding environment. The may nail may look like a dry hard plate, but it actually has between 10 and 30 percent water content. This content directly affects the nail's flexibility. The lower the water content, the more brittle the nail becomes. Using an ointment-based nail conditioner or nail enamel on the nail will reduce the loss of water. Y'all remember when we was in manicuring, I was talking about using the chip skip and what it done. It dehydrates or takes the moisture out. And if you'll also remember, I told you to tell your clients if they bought it and used it to make sure they didn't do it every day because we need a certain amount of moisture content in the nails to keep them from becoming brittle. Nail anatomy. The nail unit consists of six basic parts. The nail bed, and we know that's where the nail lays on. The matrix, or the nail root, and it's at the base of the bed. If the matrix is injured, then we may get a retarded nail. We may have a nail that will not completely cover the bed anymore as it grows out. Um, it may not grow like it should. If we destroy the matrix bed or the nail root, then we don't get a nail on that finger or toe anymore. We have the nail plate, and we know what that is. That's the actual nail body. The cuticular system, which is the cuticle, the eponychium, and the hyponychium. That means it's the around the nail and right under the nail. Specialized ligaments that hold the nail in place and the nail folds. The nail folds are actually what the nail fits into because we know the nail is not a flat surface. The nail bed is the portion of the skin on which the nail plate rests. It's richly supplied with blood vessels and that's why we see it pink under the nail plate. It extends from the lunula or half moon and I have one lunula and that's on this thumb right here. It's a little half moon white shape. So the pinkish area extends from the lunula to the area just before we begin to see the free edge of the nail. The nail bed is supplied with many nerves and is attached to the nail plate by a thin layer of tissue called the bed epithelia. How many of y'all have heard quick? I broke my nail off in the quick. And that means when it pulls it loose from the uh, bed epithelium. The bed epithelium forces the plate to grow towards the end of the digit or finger or toe instead of growing straight up off the matrix bed. The matrix bed or nail root is where the nail is actually formed. The matrix bed is composed of matrix cells that produce the nail plate. The matrix bed contains nerves, lymph, and blood vessels that nourish the nail. The matrix will continue to grow as long as it receives nourishment and keep in healthy condition. It extends from under the nail fold at the base of the nail plate where it can be seen as the whitish half moon. 
that we just talked about as being the lunula. This visible portion of the matrix bed is called the lunula or half moon. The light color of the lunula is caused by a reflection of light where the matrix and the connective tissue of the nail bed join. The matrix bed may be roughly divided into three parts, the proximal matrix, the intermediate or middle matrix, and the distal matrix. The nail plate grows from all three. Growth of the nails can be effective if an individual is in poor health or if they have one of the disorders or diseases of the nail that we're going to discuss later. And sometimes if there's been an injury to the nail matrix. Most of us at some point in time have slammed our finger in a door. Usually it's a vehicle door. And as long as we don't injure the matrix, you know, even though the nail itself, it turns black, the nail bed does from the blood that's caught underneath and from the bruising. But usually all of that will grow out as long as we don't injure that matrix. The horny nail plate or nail body rests on and is attached to the nail bed. It is formed by the matrix cells. It is the most visible and functional part of the nail unit. The nail plate seems to be in one piece, but is actually constructed in layers. This structure can be readily seen in both length and thickness when we have a split on our nails. The free edge is the part of the nail plate that extends over the tip of the finger or toe. And needless to put, say, people who have onychophagy have no free edge. Do we remember what onychophagy was? Why wouldn't they have a free edge? I'm giving you a hint here. Onychophagy is when they bite them off. The cuticular system. The cuticle is the crescent of toughened skin around the base of the fingernails and toenails. Where have y'all heard cuticle before? On the skin? Don't we call the cuticle layer? What about on the hair? Cuticle imbrications. It's the outer layer each time. A normal cuticle should be loose and flexible, seals the area against foreign materials and microorganisms, thus helping to prevent injury and infection. The eponychium is the extension of the cuticle at the base of the nail bar body that partly overlaps the lunula, and they're talking about right here again. The hyponychium is the thickum stratum corneum of the epidermis that lies underneath the free edge of the nail. When I break one of my nails off, my hyponychium is very, very sensitive to any touch because it's not used to ever touching anything. And my fingers will be so sore I can hardly even type on the keyboard from the tenderness in them. The hyponychium seals the free edge of the nail to the normal skin, thus preventing external moisture, bacteria, or fungi from getting under the nail. A ligament is a tough band of fibrous tissues <coughs> excuse me, that connects bones or holds an organ in place. Specialized ligaments attach the nail bed and the matrix bed to underlying bone. They are located at the base of the matrix and around the edges of the nail bed. The nail folds are folds of normal skin that surround the nail plate. These folds form the nail grooves which are the slits or furrows on the side of the nail on which it moves as it grows. I call them like the railroad tracks. And what happens when a train runs off of its tracks? It derails, there's an accident, things get hurt. When your nail gets out of its nail grooves or off of its tracks is when we have an ingrown nail. And we'll talk about the things that can cause it later. The mantle is the deep fold of skin in which the matrix bed or nail root is lodged. Naturally, nail growth is affected the same way our hair and skin growth and reproduction is. If we're healthy, the medications we take, the foods we eat. A normal healthy nails can grow in a variety of shapes depending on the individual, depending on the shape of the matrix bed. Its length and the speed with which it produces a nail plate are all factors that determine the thickness of the nails. A longer matrix bed will produce more nail to make a thicker nail plate. The average rate of nail growth in the normal adult is about one-eighth inch a month, and that's why it takes us a long, long time to get long nails. Nails grow faster in the summer than they do the winter. They grow faster in children than they do 
adults. And then as we get to be elderly or age, they grow at a slower rate. And I'm going to give you some statistics, and I don't find these necessarily impressive because I don't fit into this, and you may find you don't either. It said that the nail of the middle finger grows the fastest, thumbnail grows the slowest. I have to cut my thumbnail off a whole lot more often than I do any other nail. But then I use my hands a lot and probably my thumbs a lot. Toenails grow more slowly than fingernails, but they are thicker and harder. Some nail malformations. <clears throat> Disease, injury, infection occurs in the matrix. The shape or thickness of the nail plate can change. A normal nail will be replaced as long as the matrix remains in good condition. If the nail plate is separated from the nail bed through injury, it becomes distorted and even discolored. And we know that that's blood from the nail bed. Should the nail bed be injured after the loss of a nail, the new nail will be badly formed. Ordinarily, replacement of the nail takes four to six months. And we also want to talk about, we know that our skin sheds, because we get, call it ashy or flaky. Our hair sheds, we find it in our hair brushes, but our nails do not shed like our hair and skin. So it's a little different type of protein keratin. Nail disorders. A nail disorder is a condition caused by injury to the nail or some disease or imbalance in the body. Most, if not all, of your clients have experienced some type of common nail disorder at some time in their lives. We need to know how to recognize. We're not going to start diagnosing things, but we need to know how to recognize these things so we'll know if we can work on the nail, if there's something we can do to help, or if we need to refer them to a physician if they're contagious. You may be able to help your clients with nail disorders in one of two ways. You can tell them that they may have a disorder and tell them to see a physician. Or you may cosmetically improve the disorder if the nail irregularities and blemishes fall within something we can do, such as ridges we can buff, you know, and even out ridges. It's our responsibility to know which option to choose. The rule is if the nail or skin to be worked on is infected, inflamed, broken, or swollen, we do not service them. We refer them to a physician. Blue nails or discolored nails is a condition caused by poor blood circulation. A heart disorder or topical or oral medications may cause it. The nails turn a variety of colors, not only blue, but blue, gray, green, yellow, red, or purple. It may indicate the presence of a systemic disorder. A client with this condition can benefit from a regular manicure with polish, artificial tips, or wraps. But one thing we need to know about this, sometime this can be a circulatory problem when the nails look blue. And what would we need to remember about massaging if we think it could be a circulatory problem? That we shouldn't do it without the physician saying that we can because we don't want to be messing with stimulating circulation if there's some sort of problem there. Bruised nails, we know what that is. We've slammed it in the door, hit it with the hammer, and the color underneath is the blood from the nail bed. The dried blood will attach itself to the nail. It grows out with it. You just want to be gentle with this finger and avoid pressure on it when we're massaging or anything because it, it probably hurts. Corrugations or wavy ridges are caused by uneven growth of the nails. Usually the person has had an illness or an injury that causes that. When manicuring a client with this condition, carefully buff the nails. And the reason we talk about carefully buffing, we may have a high point here, but right under it is a low point. And we start buffing, it's all right to get some of the high points off, but if we get down in the low points, we're taking off layers of the nail that that client needs. When manicuring a client with this condition, carefully buff the nails. This helps to remove or minimize the ridges. Ridge filler may be used with colored polish to give a more smooth look to the nail. Eggshell nails. That's a good name for them because you know how easy it is to break an egg. We get one out of the refrigerator and at least a little bump and it breaks. So eggshell nails have a noticeably thin white nail plate. They're more flexible than normal. The nail plate separates from the nail bed and curves at the free edge. That means that instead of sticking out like this, 
It curves right around the finger as it grows. The condition is caused by improper diet, internal disease, medication, or nervous disorders. Be very careful when manicuring these nails because they are fragile. They break easily. Use the fine side of an emery board to file them gently and do not use pressure with a metal pusher at the base of the nail. What about the metal pushers? Here we are with metal again. Are we going to use metal? No. I prefer just not to even have a metal pusher use the orange wood stick because metal, even on healthy nails, can scrape off part of a layer. Furrows or depressions in the nails can run lengthwise or across the nails, usually caused from illness or from an injury to the nail cells that are in or near the matrix. They can also be caused by pregnancy or stress. Some lengthwise ridges are normal in adult nails and they increase with age. Lengthwise ridges can also be caused by conditions such as psoriasis, poor circulation, and frostbite. Since these nails are exceedingly fragile, great care must be exercised when we manicure. Avoid the use of the metal pusher. Instead, use a disinfected plastic pusher or a new cotton-tipped orangewood stick around the cuticle area. Then we have hang nail or ag nail. And this is what clients call it when their nails split. But actually it means when a cuticle splits around the nail. Dryness of the cuticle, cutting off too much cuticle, or carelessly removing cuticle tissue can result in hang nails. Advise your client, educate them about proper care, such as hot oil manicures, to help correct it. If not properly cared for, a hang nail can become infected. In the case of an infected finger, the client should be referred to a physician. Signs of infection are redness, pain, swelling, or pus. We use a lot of the botanical oils or nature's oils as we get into manicures. And if you've got a client that does things like a lot of filing, file folders are really bad on a hangnail because they catch it and pull it, keep pulling it further up the finger. Sell them some of these botanical oils. That really softens it up, and they massage it in and use it at night. Leukonychia, or white spots, simply a whitish discoloration on the nails, usually caused by an injury at the base of the nail. They may appear frequently in the nails, but they do not indicate any disease to us. As the nail continues to grow, these white spots eventually disappear. Are we concerned about leukonychia? Not at all. Melanichia is darkening of the fingernails or toenails. It may be seen as a black band under or within the nail plate extending from the base to the free edge. Some cases it may affect the entire nail plate. A localized area of increased pigment cells or melanocytes are usually within the matrix bed is responsible for this condition. As matrix cells form the nail plate, melanin is laid down within the plate by the melanocytes. I've been noticing that a lot on some of the clients we've had to uh, pedicure. Have y'all noticed it? More than I used to see it. I guess we didn't do maybe as many pedicures. Anicotrophia is the atrophy or wasting away of the nail. The nail loses its luster, it becomes smaller, and sometimes is shed entirely. Injury or disease may account for this nail irregularity. File the nail smooth with the fine side of the emery board. Do not use a metal pusher on it. Advise the client to protect the nail from further injury and also from using strong soaps or detergents on it. Onycoxis or hypertrophy. Anytime we see the word hyper, what does it mean? Overly. Overly, too much of. So this is an overgrowth of the nail, but it's not in length, it's in thickness. It is usually caused by a local infection or an internal imbalance, but can also be hereditary. If infection is present, the nail should not be manicured. If infection is not present, you may file the nail smooth and buff it. Can we buff and take off some of the thickness of it? Yes, we certainly can. Especially sometimes they're very hard to cut because we can't get the clippers on them. Anacophagy, what did we say this was a while ago? 
biting the nails. It's an acquired nervous habit. It advised the client that frequent manicures and care of the hardened cuticle around the nail often help to overcome the habit. Sometimes the application of nail enhancements can beautify deformed nails and discourage the client from biting the nails. Would this be a good place for sculpted nails, you think? Probably would be. Even nail wraps would make it difficult for them to bite the nails. Onychorexis. It's abnormal brittleness with stri striations or lines of the nail plate. Among the causes of brittle or split nails are injury to the finger. Careless filing of the nails, vitamin deficiencies, illness, frequent exposure to strong soap and water, and excessive use of cuticle solvents and nail polish removers. You may want to suggest oil manicures to deal with this problem. Would this be a good time to teach your client the correct way to file nails? Do y'all remember what the correct way is? Corner to center, corner to center, not the sawing movements. Plicatured nail means folded nail. The surface of the nail is generally flat while one or both of the edges are folded at an angle of 90 degrees or more down into the soft tissue nail margins. This disorder may result from an injury that deforms the matrix bed. Plicatured nails are not the same as ingrown nails but could develop into them. Usually ingrown nails go out of the grooves and stick into the sides of the fingers, plicatured nails fold up in the middle. Pterygium. The forward growth of the epinicium or cuticle with adherence to the surface of the nail. They give you a picture of a real bad case of it, but you can actually see it in some of us individuals. And it's hard if you don't keep it pushed back, and this is the reason for regular manicures being good. The nail cannot grow healthy as long as the cuticle is wanting to adhere to the nail surface. It's like it wants to hold it back. Do not treat pterygium by pushing the extension of skin back with an instrument. And that means when you've got a case like this and it's gotten out of hand. This could cause injury to the tissues and will make the condition worse. The gentle massage of cuticle creams and conditioners into the affected area may be beneficial. Once the disorder has occurred, it's usually not reversible. Oil manicures may be helpful. How do you think the oil manicures are going to help? It'll loosen it, make it turn loose a little bit, and make it want to go back. Tile-shaped nails have an increased crosswise curvature throughout the nail plate caused by an increased curvature of the matrix bed itself. The borders of the nail are parallel to each other. This nail type usually does not cause discomfort to the individual. Is that something we would be concerned with if we we're manicuring them? No, it's not, not contagious or anything, and we haven't got to worry about hurting the individual. Trumpet or pincher nail is a disorder in which the edges of the nail plate curl around to form the shape of a trumpet or cone at the free edge. A while ago we had the plicatured nail where they're coming in like this. The trumpet or pin pinch your nails, they go ahead and form a complete circle. The nail bed becomes constricted, it may be painful. In most instances, you may carefully trim the margins of the nail to make the client more comfortable. This would certainly be a time to send them to a podiatrist and let them deal with it. Nail fungus. And one of the reasons we're concerned with nail fungus is because the services their clients are getting today on their nails, the enhancements are causing a lot of the nail funguses. It's not the only thing that causes them working out in the yard, getting your hands in soil, going barefooted can also cause the nail funguses. Fungi are vegetable parasites. This includes all types of fungus and mold. Nail fungi are of concern to the salon because they are contagious and we can transmit them from one client to another through unsanitary implements and work conditions. Fungi can spread from nail to nail on the client's hand and from the client to the nail technician. With proper disinfection and sanitation practices, fungi can be avoided. What do we do if we get the client that has a fungus? You could tell them you can't work on them. 
wear gloves if it's somebody you want to work on. There is a law against us working on people who have head lice. There, at this point in time, there is no law that restricts us from working on someone with nail fungus. But we need to remember when we use the foot bath with them or the finger bowls, any of the implements we use need to be discarded properly or need to make sure they are washed and then uh, disinfected and that they are left in the disinfectant a proper amount of time. And certainly we should use gloves, yes, because that's the last thing we want. Discolorations between the nail plate and artificial enhancements are referred to as moles. It's actually a bacterial infection. This naturally occurring bacteria on our skin can grow out of control and cause an infection under certain conditions. These infections can be caused by the use of implements that are contaminated with bacteria. They've had this on 2020 a time or two in 60 minutes. You're going to see it in the newspapers periodically where people are going into these nail shops, getting a pedicure, and I guess they're washing the bowl to a degree or the bath to a degree, spritzing it with something, wiping it down. The disinfectant's not staying in contact long enough. Your bacteria is left there. The next client comes in. They've got a little different kind of bacteria, something wrong with them. And again, we go through that process, and that's left there till it's come up with a new bacteria. The doctors don't even have an antibiotic to work on it, and it's eating flesh. It's not called the flesh-eating bacteria, but it eats holes in client's flesh. They cannot get them to heal up. Is that just no, they don't have. I don't think they have a name for it yet. They're they're trying to come. It's where bacteria is attaching to other bacteria and have come up with their own strain. No, and that's some name, isn't it? The infection can actually be identified in the early stages, and this is for uh, mold, as a yellow green spot that becomes darker in its advanced stages. The color usually changes from yellow to green to brown to black. If the nail has been affected for a period of time, the nail may begin to soften and smell bad. The nail plate becomes sensitive to the touch. If these conditions continue, the nail will probably fall off, but usually the client will return to the salon to get the artificial product off. Are you obligated to take that nail, that sculpted nail off? Yes, you really are. You put it on there. And the doctor needs it off so he can see really what's going on underneath it and treat it. But the way you take it off is you put them in to soak. You glove up. Get your orange wood stick to push the enhancement off. If it's ready, put them back in soak. So yes, you should help them expose the natural nail. You may also file off some of it, but make sure you're wearing gloves during that time. And make sure you refer them to the... Um, doctor. Also, we need to keep in mind that we need to educate our client when they get a nail enhancement, meaning a sculpted nail, a nail wrap, a nail tip, that um, they need to come to us for regular pre-treatments or in-between treatments, post-treatments, I guess you'd call them. We want to look and see if there's any air pocket there. And this is why we want to be careful about getting our sculpted nail product close to the cuticle. Because when we get it up there and lift a little bit, water can get into the strangest places. And that's what causes a lot of this is moisture. All right, our nail diseases. This usually scares students to death, but I want to go ahead and tell you, very seldom have I ever seen nail diseases with people that come in. You'll see fungus more often than anything. Occasionally, especially if you cater to children, you may see tinny or a ringworm, which we'll discuss. And I think we have discussed it some units. But you don't see a lot of these. You see ingrown nails of, occasionally and onychophagy occasionally. There are several nail diseases that you may come across. Any nail disease that shows signs of infection or inflammation, such as redness, pain, swelling, or pus, should not be treated in the salon. Medical treatment is required for all nail diseases. Some of them, when they have a nail disease, it may be okay for us to glove up and work on. If there's pus present, we don't want any part of it, even if we glove up, because then that sometimes causes us to break skin. A person's occupation can cause a variety of nail infections. 
Are you in one of those occupations? Mm -hmm. You certainly are. So whenever you put in a, a permanent wave or relax or a color, what should you do to protect yourself? Wear gloves. Wear gloves. We have protective clothing, and it's relatively inexpensive. Put it on and wear it. Infections develop more readily in people who regularly place their hands in alkaline solutions. That can cover a lot of our territory, can it? Even up to some of our shampoos. Natural oils are removed from the skin by frequent exposure to soaps, solvents, and other substances. The cosmetologist's hand are exposed daily to chemical materials. Many of these materials are harmless, but some of them are potentially dangerous. Always protect your hands and nails when working with chemicals. Onychosis is a technical term applied to any deformity or disease of the nails. And that is the best thing you can tell your client regardless of what you see. Don't give them a diagnosis because then they're going to want to go to the drugstore and see if they can find something over the counter to fix it with and piddle around before they go to the doctor. Just tell them that... The, it's onychosis. That means it's some type of disease of the nails. You're not sure what, so you wouldn't know what to tell them for treatment. Onychia. It's an inflammation of the matrix of the nail with formation of pus and shedding of the nail. Any opening of the skin allows the entry of bacteria, fungi, or foreign materials. This may result in onychia. Be careful not to cause an abrasion or opening in the tissues around the nail plate while performing a nail service. Improperly disinfected nail implements and bacterial infection can cause this disease. Can the improperly disinfected nail implements be our fault? Could be, but it could just be that they keep their nail file and all laying on the table side of their chair while they watch TV and pick it up all the time. Is that a dangerous practice? It is a dangerous practice, and we need to advise them, you know, you need to clean and disinfect your equipment, just like I do here at the salon. Onychocryptosis, and I remember that from the crypt and the toes. If you've ever had an ingrown nail, you are almost crippled. Very painful. Onychocryptosis, or ingrown nails, it can be fingers or toes. The nail grows into the sides of the tissue around the nail. The movements of walking can press the soft tissues up against the nail margin, contributing to the problem. If the tissue around the nail is not infected or if the nail is not too deeply embedded in the flesh, you can trim the corner of the nail in a curve shape to relieve the pressure on the nail groove. You may not work on an infected ingrown nail. Refer them to the physician. I got to tell y'all this story, and our time's kind of running out. The post office is going to treat ingrown nails. They're all on their feet on cement floors all day long. And somebody comes up with the white idea, if you will cut a V here in the middle of the nail, then the nail can come to the middle rather than press to the edges. <laughs> That's some wild-looking nails because <laughs> it's got two... Two points or fangs, as I call them, that come out. I don't think that works, but for some reason they think it, do, it does work. It does. My grandma and my sister did their toes like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all have a solution now. I think better would be to go to a podiatrist and let them see about it. So I thought it was real comical, especially when I'd get to seeing them with the two little points out on them. Onychographosis is the thickening and increased curvature of the nail, also called ram's horn nail, usually a result of injury to the matrix, may be hereditary, could also occur as a result of long-term neglect. It's most commonly seen in the big toe or great toe, but may be seen in other toes as well as in fingernails. The nail usually has many crosswise grooves and ridges, is brownish in color, and one side of the nail grows faster than the other, curving the nail plate and giving it its typical ram's horn configuration. I cannot imagine letting a toenail get that long. The thick curved nail is hard to cut, so the nail remains untrimmed, adding to the severity of the problem. If no infection is present, you can trim the nail. 
with the proper nail nipper and a file. Remembering that each of the grooves is a weak area of the nail plate, trim the nail across the plate at a groove, taking only small bites, and the nail will break off when it has been trimmed about halfway across. Onycholysis is the loosening of the nail without shedding. Usually it begins at the free edge and continues to the lunula. It's frequently associated with an internal disorder, trauma, infection, nail fungi, and allergy to nail enhancements. Nail enhancement products, or it may result from certain drug treatments. Onychomedesis, it's the separation and falling off of a nail from the nail bed. It can occur on fingernails and toenails. In most cases, the cause can be traced to a localized infection, minor injuries to the matrix bed, or a severe systemic illness. Some chemotherapy treatments or x-ray treatments for cancer may also cause it. When the cause is removed, a new nail plate will form. If onychomedesis is present, do not apply enhancements to the nail. There is no active infection present. You can give a basic manicure or pedicure. Onychophosis refers to the growth of horny epithelium in the nail bed. That can be painful, although it's not likely to become infected. And what it is is like a callus under the nail plate. And it pushes down into the nail bed and pushes up towards the plate, keeps it pushing into the nail bed. So it's just uncomfortable. Onychoptosis is the periodic shedding of one or more nails in whole or in part. This condition might follow certain diseases such as syphilis. Can result from fever, trauma, system upsets, or reaction to prescription drugs. And what happens, like in the case of syphilis, they tell me it has very little signs. And then what little signs it has will go away after a period of time and then recurs or whatever. But the whole time it's working on your internal whatevers. And it will eventually make your nails fall off. Paronychia or felon. It's a bacterial inflammation of the tissue surrounding the nail. Pus is usually present. Does that mean anything to us? It means we don't work on it. May also have a gradual thickening and brownish discoloration of the nail plate. Paronychia around the entire nail is sometimes referred to as runaround paronychia. Chronic paronychia is most often caused by a yeast infection of the soft tissues around the nails, but can also be a bacterial infection. Individuals who work with their hands in water, such as dishwashers and bartenders, or who must wash their hands continually, such as health care workers and food processors are quite prone to this infection. Could that put us in danger of it? Don't we have to wash our hands often? Toenails, because of perspiration and foot gear, may often exhibit chronic paronychia infections. Do not aggressively push back the cuticle in the presence of paronychia. There are products available that will safely remove and soften the excess cuticle formation. Pyogenic granuloma is a severe inflammation of the nail in which a lump of red tissue grows up from the nail bed to the nail plate. And that's going back to what we were talking about a while ago, except this time it's a lump of red. Tinea. This is going to be one of the things that we may see. It's ringworm. This is not the only time we're going to discuss ringworm. This is a highly contagious skin disease caused by a vegetable parasite or fundus. We do not want to confuse this with sandworms. You know, children often get sandworms on their feet and legs from playing outside. Tinny or ringworm is characterized by itching, scales, and sometimes painful circular lesions. Most cases of dermatitis of the hands resemble tinea but are actually a contact dermatitis plus a staphylococci infection. Only a physician can determine the difference. So we certainly want to send our clients to a physician. They need medical treatment if it's tinea or a staphylococci infection. Tinea pettis is the me medical term for athlete's foot or ringworm of the foot. In acute conditions, deep, itchy, colorless vesicles or blisters appear. These appear on isolated, as isolated blisters or may appear in groups. 
sometimes on only one foot. They spread over the sole and between the toes, perhaps involving the nail fold and infecting the nail. When the vascules rupture, the skin becomes red and oozes. The lesions dry as they heal. Fungus infection of the feet is likely to become chronic. Is it contagious from individual to individual? It is contagious. Tinea unguium or onychomycosis is ringworm of the nails. A common form is whitish patches that can be scraped off of the surface of the nail. A second form is long yellowish streaks within the nail substance. The disease involves the free, excuse me, invades the free edge and spreads towards the root. The infected portion of is thick and discolored. Third form, the deeper layers of the nail are invaded, causing the superficial layers to appear irregularly thin. These infected layers peel off and expose the diseased parts of the nail bed. Y'all may remember when we talked about tinea in the scalp, me telling you about a customer that had a ringworm right on the top of his head. He had real dark black hair. And um, I wasn't working on him, but one of the girls that was working with me was working on him. And she, she said, come here, I want you to look at this for a minute. She said, what do you think it looks like? I've already told him what I think. I said, well, it looks like ringworm to me, you know, and he needs to see a physician because all the hair is going to come out. And uh, eventually it did, the hair come out of that place as it, the circle closed up. And you could feel just little stubs there. It wasn't slick, but you could feel little stubblies there. But he went to the doctor and got some treatment. And when his hair come back, it was just as white as the pages of this book. And he naturally went back to the doctor. We'd put some color on it periodically. But the doctor said it may or may not get its coloring matter back to it. So ringworm's kind of serious. No, I mean, not that it matters that you've got a white spot up there, but the thing is you've got a bald spot. It's bad enough it makes the hair come out. So on the nails, you'd certainly want to be careful of it. And I, personally, I'm not going to work on somebody that has ringworm because it's too highly contagious to take a chance of them being with your implements. Even if you're going to throw part of them away, you're not going to throw your manicure table and all out. And it's just too hard to, to disinfect every crack and crevice. All right, do we have questions?